You're gonna sum up all the numbers and then return the output. Think you can do that? Okay, probably. Yeah. Doesn't matter what language. Doesn't matter. Well, let's go. We need a way to keep track of the current sum. I like where your head's at. So we'll start off, initialize our sum to zero. I'm doing this in Java, by the okay. way. Okay. Java doesn't work. J hey. Oh, I'm kidding. Hey. <laughs> Okay, hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Lionel Techline and partner West Paul. And as you can see from the intro clip, um, I came across this YouTuber, Kenny Guterman, right, who was offering $200 to people in New York City to solve coding problems. And everything is great except for one thing. They did not use PHP. I mean, what the heck? They were using Java to solve that problem. So I thought it would be really interesting to actually show you guys the same problems that he's offering, especially with $200, and actually solve it with PHP. And to prove to you guys that PHP is that level of a language. I mean, come on guys, like of all the languages that they gave, they, nobody talked about PHP and they even did uh, Java, right? Which would require you to actually set up an object before you can even start coding this stuff. So I thought it would be very interesting to do that. So you're a CS major? Yes. Okay, per perfect candidate. So you know what to do? Yes. Okay, she's confident. How fast do you think you can do this? Right. Put 10 seconds on the clock. Okay, welcome. So uh, the first challenge that Kenny was giving out is basically to reverse a list, okay? And uh, what I've done is I've actually just used PHP to create a little uh, web page here. And the best part of PHP is, as I said, it is a compiled uh, template language. So you don't actually have to work in some dark uh, command line thing. You can work in the web page without spending a lot of time actually doing it up. So I get colors, I get paddings, I got a little box there. So that's what I wanted to work in. And just to make it simple for you guys, I actually just included the code uh, so that we can just look at PHP itself without actually looking at the HTML. Some people might get a little bit confused about that. So the first challenge, right, is can I reverse the list? So I've created this list here, A, B, C, D, and basically we want to go uh, D, C, B, A, right? <clears throat> and a lot of the times, right, you would probably think maybe I'll have to loop it or something, but if the de definition of solving this is with the so if the definition is no plugins no setup just raw php straight out of the box right we can just go and grab a function that just helps us do that and that's called uh surprisingly called ar array reverse and it's just over there right and it takes an array and we want to just ignore this okay and to show you that it actually works, you just print it. Okay, and this will reverse the array. It's as simple as one, two, three. In fact, it's in one line. You're gonna sum this 2D array. So you're gonna iterate through this array. You're gonna sum up all the numbers and then return the output. Think you can do that? Okay. All sorts of stuff. Oh, you should go and define this stuff. Look, by the time Java guy has finished creating his objects, I probably had collected the $200 and gone home and spent it. So here in PHP, we don't even have to bother about that. We just go there and let's call that sum uh, equals or equals sum array plus the other sum. Okay, don't have to define the numbers. And finally, I guess we will say echo the sum. And to make it nice and looking uh, on the thing, I would just add this, or let's just do this. The sum of 2D array is sum. Or if you want to do that here, you can just do that here. Again, you can insert it in there. You can actually display the answer very quickly. So let's take a look at it. Did I get the sum of the array is 22. Let's count that and see if that's correct. One, two, four is um, seven and four, five, six is 15. So it is 22. So that is the sum of a 2D array is 22. And
You have to find the two numbers in the array that equal the sum. So in this example, those two numbers are three and six, and the sum is nine. I can start a for loop over here. I can save the value. You could try a, a double for loop, maybe. Okay, so in this last example, the most difficult of them all, right? Like, you won't get this off the street. Is basically, I have an array, right? And I have two numbers in here that will equal to nine. So basically, um, when you add them up, the numbers will be nine. From here, on this list, you can see three plus six is nine. So the number would be three and six. So how are we going to solve this? The obvious answer is probably going to have to loop and try every combination. So one thing I want you to note is that it's actually in ascending order. So we don't have to worry. We can doubt, right? First, we're going to have to loop uh, one loop. So let's do an AA again. Okay, and for each, uh, this time around, I will use a uh, iterating loop, okay? So i equals zero, i plus plus, and i less than the count of aa. But what if I'm over at the last one, right? I don't, want, I don't need to go to 23 because that will catch an error when it's plus one. So I can just have a minus one over here and that solves the problem. So if I'm on 11, right, I don't need to go to number 23 because I don't have a number 24. So you just iterate through uh, from one to 11. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do, right, is just add them up. So you need two numbers. So let's call it X equals uh, AA i right and y equals a a i plus one so this basically just grabs the two numbers and then we count them so we just check the number we count them so this will just iterate everything across uh the list two by two by two but then next thing is what would be a better way maybe we would iterate everything um after one so you go three four uh, three five six eleven and twenty three so how would we do that we'll probably just loop it again so four j equals zero j less than the count of a a and j plus plus Okay, and then now that we're looking at J, right? J is actually one plus I. So let's do J equals one plus I or I plus one. So what will happen is that J will be number three and then we'll loop again. It will be number five, six, 11 and 23. So we can actually don't even bother about this. We can move J to this part over here. I know it looks a little bit uh, up and down because I'm doing this uh, on the fly. If you just wrote it out, you'll be able to write it out nice and simply. But basically what you'll have is, here comes the first number, pull number one out. Then loop through every number from here. So let's take a look at this. Now the next number is Y, right? So Y equals AAJ, right? And now the last thing is if x plus y is equal to whatever number you want, which is the 9, okay, <clears throat> then what will happen is we will have to return, uh, say, an array of x and y. Okay, so basically it'll loop through everything and then end the thing, else it'll just return nil. Uh, let's just echo it. Sorry, I didn't use a function, right? So let's use this. Okay, so provided there is an answer. And then you will probably run. There's no answer here. So let's check a look at our code for I. Oh, okay. Here is the problem here. 
the iterator is at the end. I'm not very used to using the for loop um, with the uh, the settings. I'm usually for each all the time because it's quite rare. You can the the you normally need a transverse and array, but anyway, because of this settings, I use this loop and uh, echo x y. Let's take a look at whether we've got the answer. Okay, is less than i plus plus. Oops, this is the wrong thing. and we get three and six so that is the answer okay now there are a couple of other th tips and tricks that uh you wanna um, what do you call uh this is like a basic answer to this question the only question is that um will you actually um can you actually make this a little bit more efficient and the answer is yes because if let's say one plus uh 11 is more than um and nine there's no point trying every other number after that so one thing you can do is just break the entire leg the the loop by adding a condition of say uh if x plus y is more than nine right then you might as well just break the entire uh loop for it so you just stop doing that um that that part and this will actually save you iteration. Let's see how many times it takes for us to get the answer. So I'm just gonna put this one in here. So 12 counts, 12 loops, 12 tries. Now with the new algorithm, right, we're just gonna break it and stop doing work. How many times would it that be? And that answer is four. So we've stopped at four. We are almost 66% more efficient. So guys, let me show you some of the code again. We're looping through. Okay, obviously if this is in a function, we could probably just put a return here and just end it there. This is, um, uh, as I did it without doing a function and you can do that in PHP. But uh, what I wanted to show you guys is how PHP can be done, especially in all these languages when they're talking about coding competitions and how easy it is to be to actually write the code out. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed that segment. First of all, kudos to Kenny for putting out that stuff. You know, no harm done with the Java stuff. Uh, just a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, the first two questions, right? I use a function that's inbuilt in PHP. It comes out of the box in stock. And I don't see the value of these people that says you can't use these functions. You have to use a loop. You have to use an iteration. Why not? You have to use sticks and stones. The frameworks and the languages have built in functions and you should be fully have the ability to use these things, especially to solve it. Any kind of tool that you can use is very vital. I think I was watching an episode of something called uh, this anime show called Baki where one guy beat up a guy who did taekwondo right and he couldn't use his hands and that was just dumb because you know you have the ability to use your hands and to have a framework a language or something that limits you that doesn't make very much sense so that's why i use array reverse in the first question i use array sum i also want to showcase what php has out of the box and anybody else your first part of call is to use these tools that are actually in there Okay, point number two is kudos to all the guys actually solving questions on um, a whiteboard. Um, first of all, I'm sitting in my office down here in front of my computer with the aircon in front of my chair. Very relaxed. I've seen the questions already like before on YouTube. So I am very, very, um, you know, I'm in a very good relaxed place to actually solve them going through these things. It's much more harder to actually do it on the fly when a video is in front, you know, you're going to forget some stuff, you might get a block in. So <clears throat> kudos to those guys. I am sure if they could spend about half an hour, 20 minutes, they would solve the problem. The final one, right, is that about the validations and some of the little, uh, what do you call, uh, notations that I actually use compared to what would be the final answer if you could do it properly. Now, as you can see, PHP it can get it done quick and dirty. I've done it just now, actually, without turning on the error handling uh, part. So there were some parts that were actually like missing. If I had it, I could actually debug this thing very quickly. Uh, as I said, I seldom use the for loop. And when you start 
uh, you know, in thinking how do you change this as you're doing the question, you can make mistakes when you're actually writing live coding. Uh, what would be better is of course, if I had a piece of paper, I would write down the game plan, then go in, but that would take a bit longer. <clears throat> it sometimes it might be easier just to power through, debug the thing and actually push out the code. So these questions are very, very interesting. I've actually shown you how we, uh, PHP is probably toe to toe with any other language. In fact, it is the best to solve any of these problems because it is generally built straight out of the box to you know give you the full aspect. You've seen, right, I made a joke about Java, but this is very true because we're not very worried about validation of variables. We're not too worried about setting up objects, <coughs> data flows that actually go in between. PHP can be used like a scripting language like Python, even better than Python to actually push out code. And the last point about it is just how nice my final uh, display is. A lot of the other languages, if you're talking about Java, if you're talking about C, you're talking about any one of those things that those guys were talking about, you would have to be pushing it out to a blank uh, command line interface. And you'd be working on that the whole time. Whereas I had a very nice looking a web page set up for me to actually look at my variables. And if you're working with you know multiple variables or multiple stuff, you do want the color of HTML just helping you out down there. So that's another big point about PHP. All the other guys, they work in the darkness. They work in blank, you know, they see one blinking line. We work in full color, 256, 250 million colors of the HTML. You can even make, you know, I could put in pure CSS uh, framework in there and have something really nice to work with. So that's a major point down there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you love it, give me a like, write some comments, and we'll do more of them in the future if we reach, uh, if we get those likes. So that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.